So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new order for a crown. So to do this, what I first need to do is I need to come over here and I need to click on the new order icon. It's the one on the top left hand side that looks like a blank sheet of paper. When I click on that, it opens my three shape order form. From here, I need to first select my tooth number. For this case, it's going to be tooth number 15. And then I need to select my indication. For this case, I'm working on a crown. When I select anatomy, that's what tells it I'm working on a crown. If I were doing a framework, I could come over here, select frame, and choose any one of my frame options. These green ones are pontics, and these white ones are going to be standard copings. Going back to anatomy, after I select my crown, I'm going to hover over my plus button. I'm not going to click. I'm going to hover, and it's going to open up this menu. From here, I can select whatever material I want. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and select Argon Zirconia Anterior Crown. Whenever I select something that is shaded, such as Zirconia or PMMA, I need to also make sure I fill out what the shade is going to be. This patient has a D4 shade. Now that I've done that, I take my mouse off of this section, and you'll notice new information appeared down here. I first need to fill out Argon Case. Argon Case is what we print on the bag when we return the unit to you. We recommend you put the PAN number here. That way, you're able to easily match up your crown to the case that it belongs with. After that, I come over here and I need to fill out Argon Design ID. Specifically, I need to fill this out because I'm uploading this case to Argon for Design Services. So I just need to come up with a unique ID number here. Now that I've done that, I need to check my scan settings. Most of the time, the default options for scan settings will vary depending on what I've selected. Because I've selected a crown, it's automatically assumed that I've got an antagonist and that I've got a section model. So let's talk about these options really quick. First, object type is what you're scanning. Normally, most people are going to be scanning models, so you're just going to leave that alone. I'm scanning a model in this situation. Next, you need to select your antagonist type. You've got three options in this section. None is the option you would select if you either don't have an opposing model or don't have teeth opposing your crown. Antagonist bite, if your model's too large to fit articulated inside your scanner, you're able to take a bite and scan that instead. Or antagonist model, which means you're scanning the poured model that's been articulated. For this case, we have a poured and articulated model, so that's what we're going to select. Next, you have neighborhood scan. So I'm going to click on the neighborhood scan option, and I've got three options here as well. Unsectioned, sectioned, and none. None only really works when you're scanning for frameworks, and it allows you to scan just the die without having to scan your working arch. Sectioned simply means that I have a die to scan with a model. So if you have a cut and section model, this is what you would select. If you're scanning a solid model, but you also have a die to scan, then you can also select sectioned. If, however, all you have is a solid model with no die to scan, then you can go ahead and select unsectioned. In this case, I do have a removable die, so I'm going to select sectioned. Now that I've done all that, I'm going to click scan. Now that my scan software is loaded, I'm going to put my model in the scanner. It's really important to keep track of how you're placing the model on the plate. You'll notice that on the plate, you've got a flat side and you've got a round side. You want to go ahead and make sure that the buckle side of your model is on the round side. If you have a full arch case, you want to make sure that the anterior teeth are on the round side of the plate. That way, you can get consistent scans every single time. The case that I'm scanning is a quadrant, so I'm going to put the buckle side on the round side of the plate. Then I'm going to load it into the scanner, close the door, and hit next. The first scan it does is a preview scan. This is a quick and dirty scan. It's not your final restoration. It is simply a way for you to select the area that you want to proceed with. So what I'm going to do first is click on the buckle margin of the tooth. And after I've done that, I'm going to highlight everything else. Now that I've highlighted the model, I click Next, and it does the actual scan. Now it's finished scanning my model and I have the final scan here. Very satisfied with the scan. If you see red area down here, it's because some scanners attempt to try to scan the die in the model, and it shows red in the areas that it had trouble scanning. I'm not too concerned about this red area because I'm going to be scanning this die separately anyway. So because I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to click Next, and now I need to put my antagonist arch on the model. Again, 
you want to make sure that you're putting it buckle side to the round side of the plate, lingual side to the flat side. Once I've got it in the scanner, I close the door, click next, and it does another preview scan. Once it's done with the preview scan, I once again highlight the area that I want to keep and hit next. Now it's completed the final scan of my opposing model. Now that I have that, I need to do my bite scan. I can either click next or I can click on the icon up here in the center to switch between steps, which is what I did to get to my bite scan. For the bite scan step, what you want to do is you want to articulate your model back together and place it on the scan plate again buckle side facing the round side and you'll load it back up. In some situations you need to be careful because the putty can actually lift your die. If the putty does lift your die you need to make sure you push the die back down. Also on this case I'm scanning the upper model with as my working model. Because the upper model is my working model I'm gonna make sure that I keep the upper model on bottom at all times to prevent the die from falling out of the model during the scan. Because I put my upper model on the bottom, it's really important that I make sure that I come over here and tell it that my lower arch is on top. This will help it do the automatic alignment later. If you notice that your model isn't quite stable, or if the opposing is sliding around, it's okay to use hot glue or a little bit of putty to hold the bite in place. Once I place my model back in the scanner, I close the door, and I hit next. The scan that it does here is a very quick scan. Uh, it's not intended to be in detail, it's intended to be good enough so that we can align our two previous scans to each other to have an accurate bite. So now that it's finished scanning, it's going to process, and I've got several options to choose from. I'm going to click on alignment results. As you can see, it was able to successfully align my two models to the opposing scan, and my bite looks okay. Even though it properly aligned my two scans, I'm going to show you how to do the alignment manually. First, we're going to align the lower arch manually. I do this by clicking on the button right here, and it takes me to the alignment screen. I have two options for how I can align these scans. One is a one-point alignment, and one is a three-point alignment. What you need to do is you need to find similar geometry on both the purple and the tan models, and you need to click a point that matches on each one. When I do that, it automatically aligns up at the top, and I can tell that it's a successful alignment. I can tell my scans are aligned correctly because I see this camouflage pattern. As long as you see a camouflage pattern, you know that your alignment is good. Now I'm going to click on Align Upper Arch manually. To align this one, I'm going to use three-point alignment. First, I select the three-point alignment option. Then I need to place the points on each model. Once again, I need to place points on the tan model and on the purple model, and I need to make sure these points match. It's also important to note that if I'm doing a three-point alignment, I need to be able to have them in a triangular pattern. You do not want to put your three points in a straight line. Instead, you want to have one high and two low, or two high and one low, like so. Now that I've done that, I'm going to find the corresponding three spots, and I'm going to click them in the same order. And here you can see I have an accurate alignment. It's okay if my dots do not touch each other as long as I have a camouflage pattern. Now that I've done that, I'm going to click Next, and it'll show me my alignment results with everything together. Everything looks good. I'm going to click Next again, and now it went straight to the final step. This is because it thinks that the die scan I did earlier is the die scan I want. If your scanner does this, it's okay. All we need to do is come over here, click on 27, or the tooth that we're working on, and then load up just that die. It's important to keep track of where you're placing the die on the scanning plate. You'll notice there's a crosshair pattern on the plate where you've got a vertical line and a horizontal line. You want to make sure that your die, when you're scanning just the die, is in the center of that crosshair. Once you get the die, load it on the plate, and remember it's a good idea to keep the buckle side on the round side. We close the door and hit next. All right, now it's finished scanning my die. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on Align. And I can see there's my camouflage pattern, so I know that my die is accurately aligned. If I needed to align my die manually, all I would need to do is click on this button right here to manually align my die. I'm going to click Next, 
I'm going to make sure all my scans are visible, and I'm going to make sure I have check marks on each box up here. As long as I have all of that, I can exit my scan, and I'm done with that process.